So yes, a new game is in the horizon called Pax Day, and it's been around for a while, but you know, it just got into early access or something like that, right? So we're gonna watch a video about that and see if it's a game worth hyping about, or should we just like pass the game and you know never talk about it again? Who knows? Who knows? Let's watch a video about it and then we'll make our own conclusion. Just dun dun dun. From Force Gaming, the video. Mm -hmm. This is an imaginary opening theme song. Theme song. Oh. You know, I'll start off by saying this. If you just want to build some cool looking medieval structures like a hut, a home, mm -hmm, or even mm -hmm. an entire village, Pax Day has got wouldn't? you covered. As outlined Are by sure recent videos showcasing various community builds, you can make some cool look. I mean, but can we really, right? Right. I mean, I'm not going to say that this is bad looking or anything, but like, can we really build it ourselves? Like, hmm. Genuinely, these are fantastic looking medieval buildings. I will not deny that. Although do keep in mind that building anything beyond a tiny wood dwelling does require cooperation with a large number of people. People farming. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Like, as a single player, you only get to like build a, a riggedy thing apparently of as far as i can gather from what he just said right now but like with other people you can like build the structures that they're showcasing right with all the walls and all the stuff so yeah they're basically saying ha huh? you don't get this too yeah a large number too yeah which is the problem because like uh do you know how hard it is to find people sometimes <laughs> Or get them there at the certain times you need them to be, sheesh. ...the vast amounts of resources needed and people proficient in the various processing skills required to refine those resources into the building components before you can make the buildings. You mm -hmm. can build a tiny little home Me. yourself, but you oh. won't be building a massive village or castles like the... No, but I wanted to build a massive village or castles. What do you mean? What do you mean? I wanted to build a massive stuff though why can't i do it huh are you saying one person can't do it all no these by yourself that requires a lot of people all working together as the developer outlined mm -hmm. in their pre-release mission statement pax day is not a single player game it's also according to that mm -hmm. same post not a theme park mmo not a medieval simulator not a survival game it's a bunch of the, like Most just look at the theme. knots like it's five things that is not and then it's like okay but what is it then if it's not this not that not this <laughs> exactly what is it <laughs> my home should be a massive ruined castle i mean yeah have they never heard of people living in a castle all by themselves like a lot of anime also start with a uh, person living in a castle all by themselves like for instance um I watched a recent anime about, uh, what was it? Um, I forgot the exact name, but it was something about the archdemon wanting to know how to love his elf bride, something along those lines and stuff. And he was living in a castle all by himself. Granted, he did not make the castle, but it's not like one person won't live in a giant castle either, you know, I'm just saying. MMO, not a medieval simulator, not you a can't survival tell game, people and not, not to live in a big place. Day. After spending most of yesterday playing Pax Day, in addition to time spent in earlier alpha tests, I will add one more thing to the list, something else that Pax Day isn't, and that's ready. Mm -hmm. It's just well. not quite ready, and in its current state, I don't think it's particularly very good either. Uh, it does mm -hmm. do a few things well. Players can come together and build very cool stuff, as you've seen. And visually, Pax Day looks phenomenal. I mean, like, jaw-dropping at times how good-looking this game can be. In particular, the mm. lighting and environmental effects on many occasions, I would be, like, walking through the woods in a... I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't... I would not jaw drop my jaw for this, okay? My jaw drops for waifus and waifus only. <laughs> And I've seen no waifus in this game yet. <laughs> but also, jokes aside, like I said, I mean, it doesn't... No one's saying it looks bad, per se. But also, like... Is this just a visual novel? It's not. It, like, we're supposed to actively be, like, building and crafting and going out on adventures in this world. So, yeah, it's okay. it looking nice is a bonus, but also, like, that's not all it should be as a game unless it's marketed like that you know just walk around here simulator kind of game and it's not that so 
A lot of effort for a ghost game. Does it have adventures? Uh, we'll see. Let's see. Field or looking out at some vista and think to myself, man, this looks amazing. But everything else about the game is simply not very good at the moment. And that at the <laughs> moment part is important because yes, this is an early access title. They didn't release PAX Day saying it was a finished product, very much the opposite. But as with anything so else, they the covered quality themselves and with completeness that. of early access games can vary. For example, two of my favorite games so far this year have been early access, both in Shrouded and No Rest for the Wicked, even though those games aren't complete with yeah more didn't play either features still planned to come both of but i do know you played in Shroud, so yeah like what what's your comment on a Shroud? do you like in is it good you know that is fun okay so you think the building of it of the building parts of it is pretty nice then yeah okay both of them still also felt fully realized, generally polished, and most importantly, they were okay, fun I to see. play. I sunk over 50 hours into the early access launches of both of these games. But PAX Day lacks any of that currently. It doesn't feel fully realized, it doesn't seem even close to polished, and it hasn't been very fun to play, unfortunately enough. Now, fun is subjective. Um, sound, I have got no doubt that people are having a good time working together with 5, 10, 20 plus other people and building some awesome looking medieval villages. I mean, sure, if people are having fun, fair enough, but, like, I don't know. I, I don't really have five people I can, like, play a game with, or, like, ten people or twenty people for sure in the times that we need to. Like, it's not a thing for everyone, let's be honest, you know? And even if you do have said friends, right, maybe something happens, so they some of them can't make it, some of them have to reschedule, and then what's... Can you not play the game and stuff like that? Oh, it seems like there's dungeon. Well, what's the point of doing dungeon if 30 people are running around? Crazy destroying everything as quickly as they can come across. I mean, let's see what the point is, shall we? Let's watch it more to try to grasp it. As of this recording, there are we'll, some we'll 8 to 10,000 concurrent players online, and I'm sure many of them are enjoying themselves. But for Yay. me, the game still needs quite a bit of work before I'll consider playing it again. And I know I'm not alone. Uh, as mm -hmm. of now, Steam reviews sit at a mixed with a rating of 46%. Now, I am sure some of those negative reviews were due to the launch day server and performance issues. There was rubber banding. There was the fact that you couldn't build anything from most of yesterday, mm -hmm. like placing down stuff would consume the resources but then the wall station or whatever it was you tried to place wouldn't appear or sometimes you would place down a structure and later that structure would vanish but the technical yeah but i mean to be fair though some uh games do suffer from like the first day the 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 launch day right and then there's a few problems that they did not see coming and then they have to like quickly try to fix it uh, i mean if unless they want to completely lose all their players that is they have to quickly fix it up and all that yeah must be expected in ea <laughs> stuff aside much of which has i mean aside been from ea addressed. games there that has happened to other games as well that they need to take care of now i would mm -hmm. classify this game as extremely early access like we need to put early access games into different tiers i think their estimated one year early access period until one point of release seems a little ambitious like pax day feels very far from finish it's not I something see. that i would currently recommend spending full price on let alone the monthly subscription that the game intends to launch with uh so what does need work well Pretty much everything else outside of the visuals and the building. Consider that. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, sometimes games rely too much on the thing to for other people to excuse them for. When well, you know they like plaster the early access game uh, tag on it, and then you know you're supposed to like excuse the game for whatever it is that they're doing wrong or stuff is happening to it right because like it's early access right they'll surely they'll fix this surely they'll fix that surely surely we'll get it working for us eventually <laughs> you know <laughs> really are things uh, okay so it looks like an alpha release and not a beta release i mean technically i think they have gone through the beta release and this is supposed to be the step later from the beta release is supposed to be but it doesn't feel like it is it's to play and give developers opinion yes but supposed to help the game go to where it needs to be yeah but also you need to have like at least a good amount of the uh, game itself to understand what kind of game it's supposed to turn later turn into you know like just because you put early access in your 
a game right now doesn't mean that you're excused for a lot of stuff that might go wrong and stuff like that. Like, sure, you want feedback from your community, but A, if you don't take the feedback and actually improve your stuff, then it's useless. What's the point? Sure, it does. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I have played early access games, but, you know, you need something for the game to, like, be uh, playable and be fun to play in the first place that you would give feedback on it. It's in development. It's when you don't develop it is when you're failing, I see. So are you saying for now it's fair that they put it out as early access even though it's not really ready for an early access state? Kinda? Okay, well let's continue to see what uh, the state of the this game is. This constructive uh, feedback portion of the video. For me the biggest... Okay, well games like Ark and such state early access and then you'll niche all their content as DLC is a big fail. Yeah, well I mean... That's just weird if they did like that, yeah. But games like Baldur's Gate 3 that worked with player base to polish the game was a win, yeah, yeah. But at least you could tell what kind of game it was, or like it had enough of the game itself that you were willing to go through it, right? Standout disappointment absolutely is the combat. Uh, it's awful. I don't know how else to put it. I don't really want to sugarcoat it. Just does not feel good. Some of the worst MMO combat I've ever experienced. Zero weight or impact feel to any part of the combat loop. Were it not for the health bars floating over enemies' heads, I couldn't ever tell you if I hit anything. Wow. Like I, I, I have no clue up. because it constantly feels like you're swinging at thing. the air even when attacks do connect. I've heard some mm -hmm. people say that the game is using the baked in UE5 tech demo combat. I don't know if that's the case. They might be exaggerating, but I would say whatever implementation of combat feedback that they've got right now, it needs a lot of work. It just is very floaty, it feels weightless, and it's not engaging at all. For I mean, yeah, if, if you're gonna gather sources by combat, you do need a good combat system, that's for sure. Yeah, if you can't put 15 hours in the game, it's not in any but a demo and it shouldn't be released beyond that. Yeah. <laughs> they die from heartbreak. <laughs> They need to patch themselves up from the heartbreak, I would say. For me, improving the combat should be their number one priority. I think that that alone would make playing the game far more enjoyable. If fighting things was engaging, I would spend more time playing PAX Day, just going around clearing camps and hunting wildlife. Good mm -hmm. feeling combat carries a lot of value to me, but simply right now, combat in PAX Day, it's not good at all. It's like bottom of the barrel. Uh, unfortunately, the weightlessness dun, dun, dun. and lack of good feel extends to another big portion of the game. As mentioned earlier, building stuff is pretty much the main thing there is to do right now in PAX Day, and half of that equation is gathering the materials Gotta build, needed build, for building. Build. Similar to combat... Why is the iron deposit just out in the open? Like, this just looks a bit weird. Like, this just looks like a boulder to me, and you're saying this is an iron deposit? What? Oh, wait, why did it drop so much? No wonder it's a bit... bit, 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 bit. Three people just spamming attacks. <laughs> it fell from the sky. Oh, that's why I see. That gathering also feels pretty bad, mainly because it feels like nothing at all. Between the sounds, animations, and UI feedback, or lack thereof, collecting re resources isn't engaging either. Chopping down a tree, picking up herbs, mining rocks and ore, it all lacks satisfying feel and feedback. As with the combat, it's as if you're swinging and missing even when you hit. Even when you hit a tree to chop it down, it doesn't feel like it happened. There, the, the feedback isn't there. Some things have no ma animations at all, like harvesting animal parts, for I mean, example. I've chopped a lot of trees, of those that so. do have animations still lack that satisfying feel. And while I mean, if you don't feel like you're gonna be able to say timber, then yeah, that's a bit hmm, 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 indeed. But that could be patched in later on. Well, yeah, but it's, that doesn't mean it's not a fair point to point out right now either, if you think about it. But for it to be such a large numbers game seems that, uh huh. While this feedback might sound silly to some, uh, there are plenty of games that have done good feeling, gathering, and harvesting. Many survival games and MMOs have nailed this in the past. I would look mm -hmm. at them for inspiration. Off the top of my head, I would say that the gathering and crafting in both Lost Ark and New World were extremely well done. And those are games that are full of other I issues, but chopping either. down trees and harvesting ore felt good and impactful in both. That part of the gameplay experience was satisfying. Gathering in Pax Day, just like its combat, it is... It, it, I mean, for me, uh, the gathering of all that ain't bad either. I can feel like I, you know, chopped the tree and went chop, 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 and then bam, I got the, the stuff from the tree and all the wood and stuff like that, right? I mean, Valheim's not bad. I got bored at level 33, I see. So how was the gathering aspect for you, though, if you played Lost Ark? Because I didn't play either one. You don't remember. Okay, fair enough. 
it does not feel good. Another big thing I want to point out right now that I do think will push a lot of players away is the grind of the game. Progressing past the very basic early tiers of items requires tons and tons of grinding. Now, much of this is clearly mm -hmm. fueled by the developer's desire to require working together as a group. And one way to reinforce that requirement is that making progressing practically impossible for solo players, they have achieved this goal in two main ways. Number one, the sheer quantity of items required for progression. And number two, the proficiency skill levels that no single person could achieve themselves in a Yeah, so let's let's just look how much they stacked here, by the way. It was forgettable, I see, I see. But yeah, look how much the this is stacked. Like why is this only five piece, five piece, five piece, five piece? Whoa. How big are these pieces? What is happening here? And uh and stuff, you know? Also, look, it's not a bad thing that you want your game to be played. Uh, by multiple people grouping up and stuff like that but like restricting the solo player so much is not a good idea because a lot of the times you know how people get together and become groups it's because they enjoy playing the game on their own perhaps and then they decide to like to uh, at least make it a bit easier for themselves right they decide to group up with others or maybe they just feel like helping out each other and then they'll group you know, that's another way people group. It's not just people actually knowing others uh, and then playing the game together. It's actually people stumbling across people inside a game and then wanting to group up with them as well. That's a possibility. But if it's too much of a struggle for solo players, then you're going to have less of those type of players and less of groups might happen. I want to see how many are needed in total to build something. Uh-huh. Most of them, most players are solo players that play with others. But, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Then they have a raid night or whatever, yeah. I usually have always played, like, WoW on my own. But that doesn't mean I don't add people from time to time when I was playing it, right? Because, like, maybe I had fun uh, being in a group with someone when uh, we were doing a dungeon or something, right? And that's fine. That's how you, you know, talk to each other. And then maybe later on we would, like, go and level up our characters together, right? That's the connection you made while you played the game on your own, but you were in a group to do a separate uh, part of the game, right? But that doesn't mean I wasn't able to play the game on my own. Like, I could do most stuff on my own. And if I couldn't do a quest on my own, then I could just grind it up a bit more, get myself stronger, and then go for the thing as well. The more you try to dictate people to play w with groups, the more it's, it seems like you don't want the solo players to even enjoy your game which is kind of a bad thing because like a solo player plus a solo player plus another solo player might form a group eventually but if none of them enjoy the game then they'll never become a group in the first place and number two, the proficiency skill levels that no single person could achieve themselves in a reasonable amount of time. You are required various parts from various professions, and leveling up those professions takes a heck of a lot of time, such that you cannot continue until you mm -hmm. get with someone else who has progressed in another profession. And so both of these things will prevent solo, and I would say even small groups of players, from what we can tell, from progressing very far in the game. But even if you are playing in a big group, if you've got like 30 plus people that you're playing packs day with, you still have a lot of work ahead. Of you. Uh, the game yeah, 30 has a plus massive people. number of items Think that, of that you'll need to collect. There are at least hundreds, if not potentially thousands, of different resource and item types. There's a lot to manage, even for people who are used to playing various survival games. Wh which Pax Day is not, by the way. That was in the list of things Pax Day is not. Pax Day. I mean, imagine 30 people and they're struggling. 30 people. Do you know how hard it is to get 30 people? <laughs> <laughs> to do the same thing, like, to go towards a t same goal. Like, even a raise, right? Like, people want to take down the bosses because they want to have a chance to get, like, a gear and stuff. But, like, it's still a struggle, man. Because everyone's all like, okay, let's do a ready check. Is everyone ready? And then there can be, like, that one or two or, like, three people be all like, oh, no, wait, I'm actually not ready. I need five minutes. And then you try again in five minutes. And then the other people are like, oh, wait. Since they were gone, I was gone a bit longer, and then, whew, chaos and mayhem, I tell you. Or if someone quits the game, then your party falls apart, their computer explodes, and yes, yeah, what are you going to do then? Nothing. <laughs> You're going to have to twiddle your thumb away from them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I said, it's not that bad if the game wants to uh, get players to play as a group. That's fine. You know, eventually, if you can 
play a game solo or a group. You can do either one, whichever one you're comfortable with. But, you know, just forcing them specifically to form a group and then making it, like, use up a lot of time and way too much sources and all that. That is just, that's just, you know, stuff people don't want. Like, we're all agreeing that we'll spend a certain amount of time to do stuff, but it's not like we want, like, all the time to be taken from us either. Like, you, you need to give them something. Uh, I'm on a similar intensity multiplayer game to Minecraft, but I don't want to play Minecraft. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, yeah. I mean, I played Minecraft for, like, what was it, a few minutes? I tried to uh, do some stuff, and then I shoveled my way down towards wherever I was going, and then I fell into lava, and I was disappointed. And then I closed the game and said bye-bye. <laughs> but that was my own experience, you know. I was just trying to find, you know, another universe or another town while digging downwards, but, you know, that, that was my goal. Who wants to make a job out of a game? Other MMOs already stole that spot. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the times, MMOs... Uh, that are being made think that MMO should equal you spending time like it's your job but you're not getting paid for it because it's an MMO but also there needs to be a certain balance to that as well because if the casuals are struggling and the people that are actually giving like 12 and 18 hours into your game are also struggling there's a balance issue for sure or take breaks when or not yeah you're paying them to work their job but uh huh Exactly. He does have the Which typical the resource types. You'll find various sorts of ores, stones, and clays, plants, herbs, fruits, woods, fibers, thatches, animal parts, over a hundred different alchemy items. The list Eesh. goes on and on. And many, if not most of those, also have several tiers. So, for example, there are three tiers of iron. Again, this iron deposit looks so silly. I tell you, this, it just looks so silly. Like, I, I would not think this is an iron deposit if I ever, if I ever played this game and I was just walking past it, I would just assume it's a stone. <laughs> or a boulder. Why is this an iron deposit? Oh, yeah. Iron ore that we found in the last test, and that goes for other resources as well. So there are many different resources and item types further multiplied into their different tiers that you will be using for crafting your items, weapons, tools, and especially for building, which you will then also need huge quantities of certain items if you want to build anything other than a basic hut. Which leads me to another big issue right now for PAX Day, that is the crafting and storage. Game so for starters, there is no craft from storage. This is a clear feature inclusion that would immediately improve the game, especially yeah. when you understand just how many chests you're likely going to need if you're playing. So, for example, in the last That's test, a just thing a few weeks have. ago, Liam spent his time just trying to be a cook. Like, that is all he focused on for a majority of the first few days. And after about four days of playing with just him working on cooking and doing some gathering in between the processing portion of it, they had over 50 storage chests just for cooking-related items. 5050. And you can imagine how much of a nightmare it is to manually sort through 50 storage chests looking. Yeah, and plus, they like. You, you can't even customize these, right? Like, you could be all like, okay, so I'm gonna like put the uh, right like the meat or what, whatever kind of meat on the chest, right? Then I'll remember where I put it, right? Because um, um, you're like on auto uh, focus mode, you're just like trying to gather the materials. You're all like, okay. Psh, Put chest, put chest, put, you know, like that. <laughs> but if you literally cannot even, like, indicate where you're putting anything, like, you're bound to forget, man. Come on. Come on. Even someone with a photographic memory would still be all like, oh, this is such a hassle. Like, I know where you are, but it's such a hassle. You know, like, plus if the ingredient is nearby enough, why can't we just, like, use it within the box, you know? This doesn't need to be specifically like real life because we're playing a game do you, do you guys realize we're playing the game <laughs> for items to do your cooking and that was just for cooking. The game also has professions for alchemy, jewelry making, carpentry, armor and blacksmithing, leather working, mm -hmm. fletching, weaponsmithing, and tailoring. And each of those professions have their own sets of materials, resources, and components that you will need storing, manual sorting, and retrieval of. After just four days in the last test, Liam's group had over 150 storage chests. This was a group of 10 to 15 players uh, online at any given time. And apparently mm -hmm. you're gonna need to play in groups much larger than that which would presumably mean you need many more than 150 storage chests it's Sheesh. a lot to manage 
especially with game design is my passion. Mm -hmm. I think it would go a long way if they added. I mean, even ten to fifteen players is a lot of players. Let's be honest. But then they the game itself wants you to have even more than that. Like, oh, they they want a lot from us. Storage. And on a similar note, those crafting proficiency levels will have a will be a big gate for solo and smaller groups of players. As you level your proficiency, you do this by engaging in the crafting activity. So working at the bench, whether you are doing alchemy, jewelry making, carpentry, actually doing those things levels you up, makes you better, makes it easier, and you less likely to fail crafting of the harder recipes of that of that type. But as you move into the later tiers, the higher end forms of progression for these different professions, they're gonna require you to to get high-end materials crafted by players with proficiencies of course in the they other are. professions. So for example, if mm -hmm. you are a cook, eventually you're going to need to make a higher-end oven, but you won't be able to do that on your own because you're going to need a smith to craft the higher tier version of ore, and you're going to need a tailor mm -hmm. to make another component that goes as part of that. If I mean, that part makes sense, but... If the group but... of people that you're playing with is behind in their yeah. progression, you are going to get straight up bottlenecked until they level up, which is exactly what happened to us in the last... Yeah, because, like, you don't know how long it's going to take uh, per profession to level up, right? Like, maybe some are a little bit easier because they're a little bit easier to gather the stuff, but maybe the other ones are a little bit going to take a longer time because they have to go, like, a longer the distance to even, like, gather the stuff that they need and all that. So, <laughs> you know, it's not like everyone is doing the same thing in one circle and they don't have to go, like, further out into the world to gather everything up. Stuff takes time, man. Only those who beat this game already can play this game through. <laughs> yeah, but you also need a lot of people to do that, so yeah test this is going to affect obviously the solo players but even again those small groups of players i think 5 10 to 15 people unless you are all actively playing at mm -hmm. the same pace and at the same level you're going to get bottlenecked well, at by least other the players swimming looks decent to the levels they need but. to be to make the thing that you need in order for you to progress so yes there is a lot to grind and again this is clearly done to reinforce the requirement of playing in groups and working small with group other 15 people, people yeah like imagine say, this is not a solo <laughs> game the group focus however extends beyond the resource crafting gathering and farming and grinding combat as well outside of those early tiers of wildlife will require multiple players this is especially true once you leave the starting areas you pretty much need to be in a group if you're going to do any combat enemies in these zones will be way stronger than the gear you can craft at that and time you just hit them with the you. so until you actually go in and deal with those enemies and then craft the resources around them that they're basically protecting you're not going to be able to do this in a, a small group or How definitely not as that, a solo though, in fact in these areas you the will spear. regularly see groups of like 10 people wailing away at a single boar that's not an exaggeration that's just what it's like and i want to make clear too i think it's perfectly fine to have a grind i mean that's kind of stupid though like 10 <laughs> and when i say stupid i mean that seems very excessive that you need 10 people to go just at one board to do a decent amount of combat like what are you doing like how many people do you want to be in unison to get one thing what is happening why can't other people like go and do other stuff that this game is seriously limiting you to do anything in this game as feels like because if if you need like 10 people to even like hunt down the stuff right it's like what what's going to happen if someone wants to go and explore the world and see what else is there you can't do it level 10 the god of wars <laughs> through the board and destroy the universe apparently so and focus game, I think, is perfectly fine of a game that requires grouping and working with other players. If anything, mm -hmm. that's welcome. Most MMOs nowadays, they cater to solo play. It's a nice, uh, fr fresh breath of air to get something a little different. I also Th think this it's is way too excessive. To make a slower paced game as well with more time with and groups, I tell required so. for progression. But both of those things will likely limit the game's potential audience, but that's okay. These aren't bad ideas. It's really just the implementation and more so the, uh, it's just not finished. It's not polished enough and the motivation there to actually go through that grind and to go through the effort of, of working with people and joining those large groups. Besides building, there's there's really not much else to this game. And really that's mm -hmm. what I think the bigger issue is. That's about all PAX Day is at the moment. A big grind for resources and a requirement to play with huge groups to meaningfully progress. Combat is extremely rough. This is a massive negative for me. Even the gathering doesn't feel good, which certainly doesn't help. So yes, outside of building things, I guess PvP combat with bad combat, there's not much else for you to do in this game. Not even mm -hmm. to mention the game's monetization. For what I would consider right now a pretty rough product, they are charged $39 for basic access. Yeah, look, look at these prices. <laughs> look at these prices. <laughs>
This is the artist and this is a master and stuff like that. Just look at these prices, man. And let's see, character slots, you get two, you get four, you get six. But, like, is it even worth having multiple characters? Because, like, you still are very reliant on the need of groups. So, like, is anyone even going to really go and make some alts and stuff? The, the point of having alts, right, is that you yourself can progress through the game, but you want to try a different class, let's say, and stuff like that. So once you're done with your first character... Or, or, you know, maybe you want to take a break from your first character and you want to go to a second character. And then you can do explore it on your own and stuff like that. MMOs need to have a better balance between uh, how much a solo player can do and how much group people can do. Because solo players will eventually turn into group players if it's a good enough balance. But if there's not a good enough balance and you don't have the solo players and you only have the group players, then what is the point? Because... Once they leave, it's 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 over. It's 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 gone. That's it. Sunhaven is also going nuts with DLC. Isn't even fully released yet. Yeah, sheesh. People need to slow their wagon. Dollar and a hundred dollar tiers that grant additional character slots, cosmetics, and plots of land, which some people are considering and calling pay to win. These land plots provide no. a pretty big advantage over control of rare resources because they will spawn at set locations. So with extra plots, you can basically spread your ability to get these resources, your your access to it, and to storing it, and to access to things mm -hmm. like dungeons. Plus, once the game is finished, they have also confirmed that it will require a monthly subscription to play. I think in theory having a monthly sub for an MMO is fine but I will again say as of right now it's not quite there it needs to improve quite yeah, a lot, a lot man. I would even consider paying a subscription and I want to reiterate as well I think the premise of this game is good I think right now visually it is gorgeous love the way it looks just like getting screenshots and walking around the force of this game that's pretty cool. And I also think the structures that players can build I don't are know. I don't impressive. see the Frankly, appeal like, in that this is either. A really well done. Build yourself a medieval town a game. But that's all it is right now. If you just want to make cool medieval castles with a bunch of your friends uh, in a pretty looking world, a packed day does give you that. But outside of that, it's just pretty bare bones and frankly underbaked. Like I said, it feels like an extremely early access game. But I hope they make it better. The pitch for the final version of what they yeah. want Pax Day to be. It sounds great. There's just quite a ways uh, to go from what we've seen thus far. I would be surprised, honestly, if the game actually launches into its 1.0 version 12 months from now. It appears like they're going to need a little more time. Or if it does, I would be surprised if it gets to a point where what I would consider satisfying for a 1.0 release for paying a subscription mm -hmm. fee. There's a lot of promise here with PAX Day. I just I, I wanted to make people aware that the current iteration I just don't think is quite it. Doesn't mean that people won't enjoy yeah. it. Plus, you know, I've noticed that, like, if you make the big structures on top of the mountains and stuff, then you really have to go farther away from your base to even, like, go collect resources to do other stuff. So it's, like, um, it's even more of a, okay, you need to explore more, but you can't really go on your own because you need other people to help you to explore more. So you are so reliant. And it's too much rel reliance to see on a group, I says. It's, I have enjoyed games that I've just done building in. I think a lot of people would consider EverQuest Next Landmark probably a bad game. It shut down after all. Mm -hmm. But I remember having fun with it. Although that was a little well. different because, uh, coincidentally enough, EverQuest Next Landmark was a building game where you could build massive structures as a single person. Yeah, see, again, that's nice. Does have that group focus Let me build and, and my own castle. See how that pans out in terms of audience size, in terms of success. Uh, as of right now, the early access launch has not been very successful, but I wish the developers well. I mean, and no. I hope they can turn PAX Day around and it ends up with a 1.0 release that does mm -hmm. feel worth a subscription cost. We'll see. Thanks. That's it for today. As always, appreciate you watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. I mean, no wonder it's a little bit, you know, problematic though <laughs> if that this is as much as you want for people to do sheesh man sheesh that tells you but yeah see you guys go let's link the video itself if you want to watch it on your own it was from force gaming I'll also have them link below when we upload this to youtube as well yeah i enjoy uh, good building stuff so i tend to do them to wrap up at times mm -hmm. i mean you know like with MMO uh, games, right, like, look, everyone knows you got to put, like, a certain amount of effort, a certain amount of time, a certain amount of grinding. That's not the issue. The issue is if the balance is way too wacky and you have to, like, rely on your friends way too much or, like, uh, other people way too much, then 
how are you even gonna do whatever you want or like go around in the world and like explore the world and even like you know be impressed by the world if you have to actually do it with other people like it will it will highly limit what you can and can't do and you can't even like enjoy looking around because everyone would probably be super focused on you know like just trying to go and get the stuff done come on just keep on going and stuff like that and most people just play on the whim and you exactly i feel bad if people need to rely on me too. <laughs> say you did have 10 to 15 groups of friends uh 10 to 15 people right as friends right and you convince them to play this game right uh and then maybe they don't feel this game and then some like five of them drop off right and then now you're missing five people and now you're in tr problem again so then you try to see if anyone in the game uh, can like join you but then most likely a lot of people are already going to be grouped up because you're so heavily relying on groups and like the solo players are going to like try to see to get into groups perhaps if uh, they really want to but then the thing is right uh, what happens if you don't vibe with the group or the group just uh, uses you and just tosses you out and say no I, we don't want you no more and then bam you're back to square one again <laughs> then you run into a troll that got booted out of yeah exactly exactly yeah there's like so many things that could go wrong and eventually they might go wrong but there needs to be some kind of structure like you don't need an mmo to solely be for a solo player to enjoy obviously but you do need it to be that a solo player can do stuff on their own until they can't but only it's certain stuff and then they'll group up on their own anyways you know like i said even if people wanted to go to like scarlet monastery right the dungeon and wow like almost nobody was willing to walk to the dungeon and then they were just all waiting for a summon like four people uh just typing to me yeah we're, i'm just waiting for a summon i'm just, just okay then do the math yourself if two people are needed in a five people group to go summon and four people are saying they want to summon who is going to summon you you need to do the math on your own and then most of the time they don't so then they're all like okay it's been a while where's my summon and you're all like there's nobody there or well how am i gonna summon you the pack stay balance seems way too off but the, you know that's just my opinion i i probably would not touch it with the prices and with the it being too uh relying on uh, big groups because like i play most of my games on my own anyway so like that's a bummer they all expect someone else to give in exactly you know sometimes you play too much of the chicken game with each other and then you don't get it done and then half an hour later they're all like okay i thought we were gonna do the thing oh wait i have to go now oh wait why fat girl <laughs> what am i gonna do with that Sheesh. i don't know but you know let me know what you think and all that so we'll see what happens with this game oh yeah plus a lot of times people don't want like following directions like even if you are correct and to say what kind of directions they need to uh take in order to get the things right sometimes they'll be like no i know better than you and then they <laughs> won't follow what you said and then it's gonna take even longer to get anything done like hey yeah my prediction is another game that's just down in there i don't know we'll see we'll see